is dying without our deliver Arise and pray Arise and pray Tell the whole world hears Tell the whole world knows Lord, send us out where you would have us go Tell the lost world hears Tell the last one knows The grace of God, the love Welcome to the Santa Ponsa Community Church. What a great privilege to be able to come and worship together. And um, I'm so excited. It's so nice to have Joe leading us in worship. And today he, um, he's been playing some, I mean, I don't know. Joe kind of has these songs that he plays that it just uh, um, take me almost in a history of my Christian walk. You know, it's just really, really nice. Uh, If you turn in your Bibles to Isaiah 26, it says, you, verse 3, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever for Yahweh the Lord is everlasting strength. Now, I love it in the Hebrew, not that I'm a Hebrew scholar, but when, when you look at the actual original language, you see that the word is actually not perfect peace. The word is simply shalom, and what they do is they repeat it. He will keep you in shalom, shalom, whose mind is stayed on you. You know, if you go to Israel, everywhere you go is shalom. Shalom. Everybody wishes each other peace. And the reality is that um, there's very little peace in the world. And when, um, when we celebrate Christmas, there's this uh, always Luke 2.14 is quoted, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. But in the world, there is very little peace. People are uh, being executed as we speak. There's wars and rumors of wars. Um, Whether it's Korea, whether it's Afghanistan, whether it's Iraq, whether it's Yugoslavia, Crimea with Ukraine, now Ukraine and uh, and Russia, uh, you know, where there's uh, racial tensions, uh, just people killing one another. But the reality is that there's very little peace. And the reason there's so little peace in the world is because there's so little peace in people's hearts. What we are collectively is we we make it because we are individuals. And the only way to have peace in the world is to have peace in our individual hearts. And people without peace in their hearts will never build a society that is peaceful. It's just not going to happen. And the promise in the scriptures is that he will keep in perfect peace and shalom, shalom, whose mind is stayed on him. As we were singing um, that that one song, um, you will present her as a bride. You will get rid of all her shame and all her guilt. And and all of a sudden, I was just thinking, my goodness, this song is just expressing everything that God is going to do. I am cared for. I don't have to fight for myself. I need to see Him and allow my heart to be established. Um, Arden tested positive yesterday for COVID. And... I had to sit him down and let him know. Arden, you're positive. He goes, Dad. And then he sat with his brother. He goes, I don't want to. No, I don't have it. No. And Jonathan goes, Arden, you're strong. 
you're going to be okay. Okay. Jonathan, yes, I'm strong. I'm going to be okay. Is it going to hurt? <laughs> but you could see Jonathan comforting him, settling him. I really believe that's what God wants to do with us. And the promises to individuals, God wants to bring peace to your heart individually. And as that peace fills other people's hearts, that is when we find peace collectively. The Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God, Matthew 5, 19. And the contrast is people who cause friction. They just want to fight about everything. Whether it's in a family, just fight, fight, fight. Whether it's race, just fight, fight, fight. Whether it's class, whether it's past hurts, in politics, my goodness, here it's bad, but go to the United States. You cannot talk about politics without fighting, fighting, fighting. It's a us against them mentality. That's the contrast. A Christians are to be known for being peacemakers. Peace, for having peace and, and, and blessing in their lives, in our lives. And the sad thing is sometimes there's so little peace even in churches. People not getting along with one another because of their opinion being so important or their desires being so important. And Romans 12, 18 says, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with all men. Not always possible. Look at Jesus. People hated Jesus because of his love, because of his righteousness, because people were jealous but the reality is that we are to do whatever possible on our end to live at peace with all men. Let's not fight with our kids. Oh my goodness, I'm so convicted. <laughs> with our with our with our with our par with our with our parents, my I, I you know the one thing I went to see my mother and I went to see uh, we went to see the family with the kids and next thing you know, um, um, you know I was concerned I was concerned that my mom and I my mom and I we can just one little spark and I we had one situation with Jonathan hurt Arden he's not always protective he's not always encouraging sometimes he hurts him. And I just got on Jonathan, and my mom got in between me and Jonathan, and I'm just like, don't you get between us, <laughs> you know? And, and we, 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 we found ourselves arguing, and then we both caught ourselves. And we're like, nope, we said we're not going to fight. But it happens. There's a temptation there. It's in our hearts. And our lack of peace can ruin everything. A lack of peace can ruin the best meal. A lack of peace can ruin the best intentions we had for Christmas, for New Year, for whatever situation. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, better a piece of bread with quietness than a house full of feasting with war, with strife. And, you know, God desires to give us peace individually. And there's four kinds of peace that are promised to us in the Bible. And we're going to go through them briefly. And 
And I and I'm and I my hope is that we will be able to not just go through them intellectually, but that we would able to think be think through them and then do business with God, realizing that He wants to bless you with peace in your heart. So what kinds of peace is promised to us in the scriptures? Number one, the most important one, and without this one, you never have any other kind of peace, is peace with God. Just because a person goes to church doesn't mean that you're at peace with God. Just because you have everything in life doesn't mean that you have peace with God. Some have everything but peace. But when you believe, instead of God being your judge, all of a sudden you have God as your father. And you know what? What happens is, you know, it, it, we have the Adam and Eve syndrome. Remember when, when God said to them, where are you? Do you remember what that temptation was? To hide, to clothe. But what was God intending? Where are you? Where where have you fallen to? And then they said, we were afraid. But when they came out open, end of excuses, not justifying ourselves, not playing the victim, everybody's bad towards me, not rambling about how we are better than others and we sort of have these scales but when we just come out in the open and realize god i have fallen short you know when a person actually gets to the end of themselves and say you know what i don't know how to do this will you show me this thing that we're involved in called life it's a little bit more complex than i thought will you guide me I thought I, I knew exactly how to do it. You know, Jonathan is like that. Jonathan, uh, humility initially is not his best point. You know, he's like, I got it, I got it. And he starts, I, I do that too, actually. You ever buy something new, a new gadget, and he's like, I'll just figure it out. I don't need to read the instructions. <laughs> and then you're like, oh my goodness, I messed it up. And then you got to eat humble pie and open page one. <laughs> you know, <laughs> And you got to read every part of it. You know, and, and I think when we do that with God, when we say, you know what, I've pushed enough buttons and I got the wrong results, I've fallen short. I don't know. It is then that we find peace with Him. The devil tries to steal peace, to cause peace war but God is in the business of bringing peace to a restless heart Jesus died Romans 5 1 he says having been justified by faith we have peace with God and this is a guy who wrote that who was breathing threats. His whole heart was war. He was against this. He was against that. He was against Jesus. He was against Christians. And on the road to Damascus, he goes, who are you, Lord? He realized he was stopped by the Almighty. And then the voice that came back to him is, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. And there, when he realized that when, when, when God revealed to him the meaning of what he had accomplished at the cross, he says, Having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. And this man, who was a ball of anxiety, war, viciousness, would write from a prison, encouraging people from a place of love, grace, and peace. He was a changed man. Without peace with God, nothing else matters. Religion doesn't matter. A good life doesn't matter. Good deeds doesn't matter. Feeding the poor doesn't matter. 
Only Jesus is able to give that peace to our hearts, a relationship with Jesus, with Jesus. Not going to church, Jesus. Not listening to other people worship the Lord, actually knowing him personally and worshiping him and, and, and meditating, having our minds steadfast on him. And I want to ask you, do you have peace with him? The Bible says this, be reconciled. God wants to bless you with a reconcil reconciliation with himself. When I was growing up in Cap de Pera, um, I would go to the market and my grandparents would be at the market and they would not even look at me or greet me because they had had an argument with my great aunt and with my mother and they did not speak to him. My mom ended up being raised in a foster home and it was crazy, but my grandparents would not speak to any of us. And then when I was in the military, I came to Mallorca and I was like, oh man, I'm tired of this. I'm gonna go see him. I'm gonna go see them. And I walked in the house, and as I walked into the house, my, God, my grandfather just looked at me, who had not even directed an eye or a word towards me, ever. I had never had any relationship with him. He just began to bawl, and he hugged me, and we were completely reconciled. And, and it was amazing that to, to and, and you're just like, what a waste of time we've just had all these years. That's what God wants to do. To reconcile us to him. And the moment we are reconciled with him, there's a, there's, a, there's a stability, there's a peace in our hearts. Number two, the kind of peace that he wants to give us. God has promised us peace with our past. Peace to cover our past. Unresolved past. Have you ever made a bad decision that you regret? I haven't. Right? You're found out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, you, 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 you really, I mean, we can all go through and, and, and have decisions we made that we're just like, I just can't believe that. And it's hard. I mean, there's, there's one, one that Jonathan was I mean, this is a silly one, but to me, it's a big one. But when I was, when I was little, living in Cap de Pera again, I, um, there was a field. It's still there, actually, between two homes. And we saw some eggs there, chicken eggs. And we took those eggs, and we just began to throw them against the wall. Well, they were not yellow. They were red. It was just blood everywhere. There were chicks in there. Oh my goodness. Can you believe that? I still feel guilty about that. I mean, I was like nine years old, but it's like, there, and, and that's one thing, but imagine of all the things that we could have that, that in, in one moment can be lifted up into our memory that costs us restlessness. Think of the Apostle Paul when he felt, he remembered that he actually casted a vote to kill Stephen. Kill him, kill him. And yet, he says, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. God gave him peace about the past in his life, decisions. If I would have done things differently, why that relationship? Why that school? Why that job? Maybe I missed on something. Can you redo it? If you can't redo it, God wants to give you peace with your past. As a matter of fact, Paul said it like this in Philippians 3.13. One thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and looking to those things that are ahead. Now, you're going to say, okay, I'm going to try to forget, but I can't forget. 
Now, I want to ask you, do you think when Paul says forgetting those things which are behind that he actually didn't remember? Well, that wouldn't be true because when, he, when, when Luke writes Acts and, and he, tell, he, he speaks about Paul giving his testimony to Felix and to Agrippa and to, and to the different people, he recalls his past very clearly. He actually explains his past. I was there when Stephen was killed and I cast my vote and I persecuted. I threw women and men into prison. He remembered clearly, but to forget what is behind is to live in a way that you don't allow it to affect you, to drive you. It's one thing for thoughts to come into your brain. It's another thing for those thoughts to drive your life. Leaving behind things that even only you and God know about. Is there things in your life that you don't even dare to tell anybody about that no one knows? Even those things, leaving them behind. Leaving behind even things that people have done to you. In the same passage later on, in the same letter, Paul says, let the peace of God guard your heart a fortress so number one is to have peace with God number two is to have peace with our past do you have peace with the past now it's interesting because I, I, I did an interview um, <coughs> this week and we were we were talking about Psalm 103 and it says forget not all of his benefits David is encouraging himself. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all of, all of his benefits, who forgives all our iniquities, who remembers that we are dust. And it really struck me, sometimes when we are condemned about the things that we did in the past and we beat ourselves over it, really what we're saying, we think we're being humble, we think we're being penitent, but a lot of times what we are saying is that what Jesus did on the cross wasn't enough to forgive that. So what seems like humility actually is pride. What we're saying is what you did, Jesus, just doesn't cut it. But what we need to do is to be strong and say, Lord, what you did, you said it is finished. It is paid. And I have peace with you, and I have peace with the past. But it goes on, God's peace for the present. Psalm 55, 6 said, So I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, and I would fly away and be at rest. Have you ever felt like that? That's one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Oh, that I had wings like a dove, and I would fly away and be at rest. You ever been in a circumstances where it's above strength, beyond measure? You're just like, I just cannot take another bit of this. This is just, I, I am anxious. I am worried. I, I don't know how this is all going to pan out. I wish I could just fly away. That's how David felt. David wrote Psalm 55 in a situation where he says, I just want to escape this situation. He didn't have peace. He was discontented. He was unhappy. Maybe wanting something that, that, he, that we don't have or, 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 may, or, or maybe when we get it, it wasn't all that satisfying or maybe the situation is just so much pressure. Always looking for something else. And you know what? The reality is what we need to do is accept where we are today. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, do not worry about tomorrow. Today has enough cares of its own. And you know what? One of the best things that we can do, because remember, the verse we started with is, he will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. And sometimes when, we, when I am anxious, sometimes I'm reluctant to do it, but this is where I find peace. Sometimes when I'm anxious about situations in my life, or I feel lost in the situations of my life, 
and there's, there's turmoil, just worship the Lord and let him find you. Turn on music. Turn on worship music. Go for a walk and just worship the Lord. I have a, a friend who's a worship leader, and he says, whenever I feel lost, I just worship the Lord, and he finds me. Amen. He finds me. And you sense his nearness. And you know what? Have you ever noticed sometimes that you're, you're, you're going through this stuff, and then you, the Lord reminds you of a verse, or you just worship him, and you're in song, and all of a sudden you find yourself at perfect peace. None of the circumstances have changed. Nothing has changed, but you've changed. Accept the situation and realize that Hebrews says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And that is a triple negative, not a double, a, a, a single negative is strong. A double negative voids it. A triple negative reinforces, I will never, ever, ever, never, never, never leave you nor forsake you. You ever feel forsaken? It's a feeling. It's a feeling, it's not a fact. And we need to let facts run our life, not feelings. I will never, never, never leave you nor forsake you. And give thanks. Give thanks for where you're at. Give thanks. Turn to Psalm 103. It's, it's just incredible. Uh, this is, look what it says. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all our iniquities, who heals all our diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. And the Psalm, I mean, David is just exploding. In, in remembrance and gratefulness. Listen, in my house, it's a, a particularly ardent. Right now it's in a phase where he has a thousand toys and he's not content with those. He wants this other thing. Actually, we have a PS4 and then my brother just gave him a PS5. And... We have Spider-Man on the PS4, and we have Spider-Man on the PS5. So we told Arden, Arden, you cannot play Spider-Man on the PS5. You can play the one on the PS4. No, I want to play in the PS5 Spider-Man, Morales. And and so yesterday he was playing on, on the, the Spider-Man on PS5, and it was too hard. Now he wants PS4. I told him, no, you're not going to play PS4. You're going to play the PS5 one. And, and he's just... But in our hearts, isn't it true sometimes that we want, rather than rejoicing, being thankful for we, what we do get to do, we focus on what we can't do or what we don't have. Guys... Let us count our blessings. Do you realize that we, it doesn't matter who you are here, you are in the top 5% richest people in the, on earth. Yeah. That we live in a place that is just completely a blessing and that we have so much to be grateful for. If we would just take time and think about all the things that we get to be grateful for. To, to thank you that I have a dad. Thank you that I have a mom. Thank you that, that I have food. Thank you that I, I get to, you know, the things that you do have because the reality is what takes away our peace is focusing on the th things that we don't have. And let me say this. Let's focus to give thanks on the blessings that God has given us because those are the things that are going to last forever. Those things are going to last forever. Who forgives all of our sin, who remembers. And, and in Psalm 103, it says this amazing words. He says, he showed his ways to Moses, 
but his acts to the children of Israel. And remember, the children of Israel were always complaining, always discontent, always ungrateful. They had things and they could see the actions, but Moses could see the character. Oh my goodness, if we would grow, and we sang it today, that he would open the eyes of our hearts, show us wonders, if we would see the character of God and realize how good, how righteous, how holy, how precious, how kind, how merciful he is, it would enlarge our hearts with peace. To think of who he is. You know that creator of earth could have been anything. He could have been volatile. He could have been mean. He could have been, uh, you know, and people, I, I don't understand this question. Oh, I, I, don't, I, I don't believe that that's a God of love. You realize God could have been anything and we would have had to surrender. Yeah. And yet we find ourselves floating through a universe spinning at I don't know how many miles per hour, cruising through the solar system and, and the galaxy and the universe with a God that put perfect laws for it to function but, and, and has put us in such a tender, loving situation in the universe where life is possible. But not only that, he exercises kindness towards us. He is just, he is righteous, he is merciful. Oh my goodness, do we have stuff to be grateful for, to enjoy peace today. I'm not going to lose. I'm not going to let the devil rob my peace. And neither should you. Doesn't mean that you just settle, excel, but don't obsess. Work hard. And sometimes when, there's, when we experience peace, everything tastes better. I remember I went to, we have a friend, uh, Gernot from here, from Gospel Tribe, and, and he, we were around the table, sorry, I'm kind of, oh, it's, it's okay for time, but we were, we, were in, um, we were in my living room, my dining room table, and Gernot's there, and my wife, and Loretta's there, and he's like, hey, I, I'm going to Pakistan. We're going to do a missions trip there. And I'm thinking to myself, bless him. And then, and then, and then Gernot says, do you want to come? <laughs> Not really. I mean, I thought to myself, you know. And Loretta goes, you should go, Raph. I'm thinking to myself, why don't you go? <laughs> it's just like, I don't want to go to Pakistan. Do you know what they do to Christians there? And I found myself trapped. If I say no, I lost it with my wife. She'd be like, what? If I say yes, I'm tired. And there we went, man. We landed in, um, in Lahore. And they greeted us with roses. They put them around our neck. And we were just so excited, you know, to be there. Oh, man, these are nice people. We got in a van. And, uh, and as we left the airport grounds, a guy that looked like Bin Laden <laughs> got in the front seat with an AK-47. <laughs> And I thought to myself, there you go. It's a trap. We're hostage. Thanks, Loretta. You got what you wanted. You know, just like, you know, I just like, it's over. You know, I just thought it is done. I didn't realize that was our bodyguard. And so everywhere we were, he was with, we had, we had the secret service following us. Everywhere we went, they knew where we had eaten, where we had eaten, what, what we were, I mean, it was crazy. But I found out that they were actually there for our protection. They were concerned that something would happen to us. And then we would go to the slums during the day and to, and to do these huge conferences with like 5,000 people in the evenings. And you, have, you had people, Muslims, to make sure that we didn't say anything against Islam or against Muhammad or else we'd be dead. And I remember uh, we, we bought rice for the whole slums every day, you know, and, and they, they cooked it. And I tell you, I had the best meals in the slums being that smack in the middle of the will of God. And sometimes the simplest things can taste so good when we have peace with God, when we have peace with the past, when we have peace with the present. 
And then finally, well, first, let, let God give you peace and accept. Accept. Don't compare yourself with this guy and that girl and, and that life. The Bible says clearly, those that compare themselves by themselves are not wise. We have a life that God has allotted us. Allotted us. Let's have peace in it. And then finally, peace with the future. You know, it's crazy. I mean, the fear that is being put into our hearts with China, with Russia, with Ukraine, with, uh, with death, and, 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 and you know, not only the coronavirus, but what, 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 what could come in the future, um, with radicalism, with um, fear about the vaccine, fear about the virus, fear about the economy. Corey Ten Boom said this, never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. It's not where we're heading to, it's who we're going with. When we first adopted Jonathan, there's something I, I wanted to, I don't know if it was right or wrong, but I, I would always do this to him here, we're going to go somewhere. And he's like, what are we going to do? How are we going to do it? And I would be like, no, no, just trust me and you will see. Trust me and you will see. And sometimes we would go on adventures not knowing where we were going. One time we went to Genoa, uh, to the top there, to uh, Naburguesa. And we just went for a walk. He's like, what are we doing here? We're just going for a walk. And next thing you know, we found platoons of soldiers with their Humvees, you know, and they, were, they, they began to give him muffins, you know. And, and he was just so excited. And I said, see? Jonathan, just trust me and you will see. And, and, and I, w I, wanted to, I wanted to win his heart to be able to trust not in what we were doing, but who was leading him, that we would protect him. And I think that's what God wants from us. God wants us to enjoy a peace today about the future. Knowing that although we don't know what the future holds for us, we know that he is the one that's leading us. Again, he will never leave you nor forsake you. And it's not a logical piece. You know, th this is where we have to be really careful because what we want to do is see the future and have peace. And that's why so many people go to card readers and to palm readers and, and, uh, or even in the Mormon church, they will tell you your future to a degree. And many people want to know the future because they're afraid of the future and, and, and they want to know every. Have you ever been in a relationship where somebody wants to have everything mapped out? If everyone wants to have everything mapped out, it's because in the relationship, there's no trust. But when two people trust each other, it doesn't matter where we're going. Because I trust the person and the person trusts me. It's not a logical peace. Paul says, let the peace that surpasses understanding. You are not ever going to figure everything out on this side of eternity. Never. Much smarter people than you have been on the earth and have not figured it out. Even Isaac Newton said, you know, when they praised him for how amazing he was, he says, I feel like a little child that was playing with the stones on the shore while the depths of the sea would still lie beneath me undiscovered. Isaiah said it like this, as the, high, as, the, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are your ways higher than ours. And it's like watching a chess game of a professional people playing chess and you just don't understand the moves that they're doing. But all of a sudden it's like, check, checkmate. And you're like, how in the world did you do that? But we need to realize that we are going to gain strength as we focus our mind on him and not on the circumstances. And do you remember what happened to Peter, right? Jesus said to Peter, come out. And Peter walked on the water. I mean, he is 
he, the guy's just like, my goodness. And then what did he do? He looked at the waves, he looked at the storm, and he sank. And that's what happened to us. That's what happens to us. We need to allow the peace of God, Jesus Christ himself, to settle our hearts like I did Jonathan's heart about the future. We have incredible promises. All things work together for good for those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. My future is in His hands. And how do we get this peace? How do we, we need to ask the Lord for not just superficial peace, but a deep peace in our hearts. And I believe we get this by one, spending time knowing the character of God, God as revealed in the Word of God. By sincere prayer, by being able to, to just say, Lord, I'm afraid, I'm anxious. Will you settle my heart? Lord, I'm at war with you, and I'm not sure why. Can we make peace? Can we reconcile? Oh, Lord, the past, I feel like you're going to condemn me. I didn't realize that you've come to forgive me. Oh, the present, it's too much for me to bear. Will you strengthen me? Oh, the future looks so scary. Will you go with me? Isaiah said he is the prince of peace. The angels said, peace on earth, goodwill to man. Jesus said, peace I live with you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. And Paul said, be anxious for nothing. In closing, I went to Washington, D.C. with the kids, and there was one section uh, on the impact of the Bible. And there was one section on technology on the most search word on the internet. You know what the most search word on the internet is? Love. People are looking for love. But then there was another search do you know which verse people share with each other the most on earth? My peace I give to you, not as the world gives. People are restless. And we can be concerned about war on a global scale and not be so concerned about what's going on in our hearts. Will you make peace with God today? And Jesus has come to bless you, to settle you, to strengthen you, to redeem you. And now uh, Joe's going to come and he's going to lead us in worship. <clears throat> and I would ask, do business with him. Ask the Lord, Lord, I want to know you. I want, I want to experience this peace that you promise. And, and, uh, and if you need, there will be people uh, praying here, for, uh, ready to pray for you right here. And, and, and if you're not sure how to pray, somebody will pray with you in your circumstances. Let's, let's pray. Father, I am just so grateful that we have such tremendous benefits available to us. I think sometimes we don't take advantage of these because we are unaware of them. And I pray, Father, that you will, for all of us here today, Lord, and, and we all, to one degree or another, we, we have anxieties or we have thoughts of the past, the present, the future, or even with you. We have our own preconceived ideas and we pray, Lord, that you would stay our minds on you that we might experience shalom, shalom 
in our hearts, in the depths of our heart. Help us to put that big stone in the right place where everything else can be added to it. And not put the wrong stone there and then nothing else fits. Father, we don't want to play church. We don't want to um, have um, play games. Lord, we need you. We need you. We want to know you intimately, deeply, clearly. We don't want to worship caricatures of you. We want to know you. And I pray, Father, that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord. And you would take our fears of the future our burdens of the present and our guilt from the past and that you would swallow it up in peace with you. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Sin vida, my vision. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought by day. Isaiah 53 says, He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. 
It says earlier, it says, as a root out of dry ground, he has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. I remember growing up and just seeing Jesus upon a cross, scrawny. You go to Austria and he's everywhere, you know, here in Spain and he's everywhere. And I just did not realize. I didn't realize. At first glimpse, you just kind of think of Jesus and you think, oh, well, that's cool that, or that's good or that's good tradition. But my goodness, there's no beauty in his physical that should attract us to us, even in his death. But as we begin to understand that he is the ultimate, he is the ultimate of everything. He said, I am that I am. In the morning, give me Jesus. When I'm alone, give me Jesus. When, I, when I'm with people, give me Jesus. When I'm afraid, give me Jesus. When I come to die, give me Jesus. And you can go and you can study history and you would see that Jesus is the one that has changed people's lives throughout the history of the world. And he's able to give peace to your heart. So may God bless you. And may you, may you not settle for anyone else or anything else. I love what we sang. Fix your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the cares of this world will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. May God bless you guys so much. Capture my heart. I surrender my will, focus my mind till I'm yielded and still, hearing your voice to answer your call. Carry me away